in government. But wasn't it the same Jack Day who said nothing? They were built, nothing was done, nothing was built. And you know how we're catching this guy? He's being caught with his with, with his thing. Not Bokta, but he's getting caught every single time he opens his mouth. He gets caught because he is known as a pathological liar. Now, if you think that I'm spreading propaganda on this Paku, listen what he had to say. Listen. No, no. Good job done with New Amsterdam, Skeldon, and Port Morant Hospital under the correlation. Nobody's there to question this guy. Nobody's there to confront this guy and say that you're a blasted liar. No one is there. Look him out. Look him out. Right? Oh, man. But we're not done yet, guys. At 10 minutes after 10 o'clock, my name is Mark Bencha and welcome. But look, under the PPP regime, they're not gonna, they're not gonna tell you guys this. Take a look. This was 20. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. The much-hyped $475 million cemetery road rehabilitation project has finally linked to its conclusion after two years with many delays, but there are signs of poor and incomplete work which could pose hazards to users. The road's convergence from two lanes to a single lane at Princess Street is already causing gridlock during rush hours based on observations made by road users. The road's alignment and its narrowness at this crucial intersection create dangerous blind spots. The bridges have been criticized by local engineers who spoke with SN. Steel reinforcements sticking out from the bridge foundations are not just an aesthetic flaw. They pose a significant risk of corrosion, leading to cracks and potential collapse in the future. Fire of an unknown origin destroyed a storage bond located in a field. Sophia on Thursday afternoon. The fire, which started at approximately 1430, quickly spread throughout the bond despite the prompt response from the Guyana Fire Service. However, the firefighters' valiant efforts were unsuccessful as the bond was completely destroyed. Residents in the community gathered as word of the fire spread, and thick black smoke billowed into the sky. At the time of the fire, the owners whose name is unknown was not at the premises. It is understood that the bond stores wood, spare parts and other materials. I saw the fire start from the neighbor's side, and the wing just carried it. It all happened so fast, Fraser who recently moved to the area said. The woman told this publication that because of how fast the fire spread, a motorcycle belonging to a relative was burned. She disclosed that no one lived at the bond and there were no signs of vagrants there. No, nobody lights fires around here, she assured. Frustrated New Amsterdam market vendors on Wednesday took to the streets in the township to protest against the mayor and town council over a 100% hike in weekly stall and washroom prices. According to one of the vendors, they were told that the stall fees were moved from $500 to $1,000 while washroom fees were moved from $40 to $100. We used to pay $500, we asked them to take it $200 more, let them take it $700 but them hold out to put it to $1,000, we can't afford that. It very hard because watch how many supermarkets open in day here. The girls selling hard, it really hard on them, one vendor stated. Following the dismal performance of students this year in mathematics and CXC, CARICOM leaders have put the issue up for discussion at their next meeting and President Irfan Ali has ordered that immediate remedial measures be rolled out in schools across the country. The issue of mathematics has now captured the attention of every single head of state and prime minister in the region, and it is now an agenda for the heads of government in CARICOM. That is to tell you the issues and challenges that we face. It is not a Jamaica issue, Barbados issue, Trinidad, or a Guyana issue. It has now become a collective issue that we must address. President Irfan Ali yesterday said at the opening of the Yarrow Cabra Secondary School, Sosdike Linden Highway. The, the People's Customs National Congress Reform on Thursday said that the $40.70 that be drug bust at Matthews Ridge. Region, region 1 by Ransom the Joint Services the weekend, speaks to the need for better monitoring mechanisms to be put in place to detect illegal airstrips in the hinterland. CNU in a statement, the, the opposition party said that the lack of effective monitoring has far-reaching implications for the country's national security and territorial integrity. More than four tons of cocaine with a street value of some G40.7 billion dollars, 100 
almost 76 million, million euros worth a were unearthed in several in the bunkers area off an illegal airstrip near Machu Ridge, region, region 1. The, the narcotics, the which were found close to the clandestine airstrip on Sunday, were destroyed after samples were extracted to assist with further investigations. Following the bus, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit disclosed that its officers, in collaboration with the Guyana Defense Force Special Forces Unit with support from the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, carried out the operation Exxon Mobil Guyana Limited on Thursday said it is not opposed to Guyana installing its own meters on the floating production storage and offloading vessels currently producing oil offshore. Len Lol, in an article published on Wednesday, reasoned that the operator of Guyana's oil rich Stabro block has been given a free pass to take as much of the country's oil as it needs for its offshore operations, a move that could pave the way for boatloads of undocumented crude oil to be shipped away. The Ministry of Natural Resources, however, in a statement on Thursday said that the production for use in offshore operations, as referenced in the agreement, is not crude oil but natural gas. Exxon Mobil Guyana said the government's oil lifts all also aren't a mystery, they are available for anyone to read on the Ministry of Natural Resources website. Furthermore, despite repeated claims to the contrary, our offshore production vessels have meters, and those meters meet or exceed international industry standards. ExxonMobil also bluntly refused to provide the raw production data to the audit team. The Golden Jaguars, Diana's national men's football team. In fact, the defeat ruined the Golden Jaguars' return to action on home soil and spoiled their debut in the CONCACAF Nations League A. Playing in front of a sparse crowd but vocal crowd, the Guyanese side, even though boosted by the return of Terence Van Kutten in defense, would fall behind in the 18th minute as defender Javencio van der Kuss put the visitors ahead. Hospital. And during the pandemic, COVID-19, it was a horrible period. And so the PVP coalition, they had no plan. They were condemning and condemning. Meanwhile, a lot of them con contracted COVID. They were saved. A lot of them are alive today, and I, I know why some of them are alive today, trust me, uh, thanks to uh, a relative of mine who is a doctor in some part of the U.S., did whatever necessary, and when I asked, I said, what are you really doing? <laughs> but anyways, um, a lot of these people are alive today because of the coalition, including Jack Deal. Jack Deal was on his deathbed. COVID, coughing, sneezing, all manner, all kind of thing, messing up himself because of COVID. And had it not been because of a proper health sector under the coalition government, this Paku would have been smelling daisy. Many of them in the PVP would have been smelling daisy because they contracted, they contracted COVID. And they probably pass it on to others and others got COVID. And so this guy sits there and he, he pretends he wants to package and tell you guys that the coalition didn't do this and that. You know, and the evidence. Now, let's go. What the, the, the vision that the coalition had for the health sector, because the health sector was in ICU when the coalition took over. It was almost dead the health sector. And thanks to the coalition for reviving that. Thanks to the coalition for making the health sector strong again. Thank you, Valda Lawrence. Thank you to the APNU AFC coalition. But we're not done yet. Moving away from the Fort Kaituma Hospital that saved lives. Thank you, coalition. If Jack Dave is watching, Jack Dave wants you to take note. Not in your black book. Not, I don't care. Uh, I don't care about the black book anyway. But Let's talk about this. Isn't Jack Day the one who said nothing was built under the coalition? Now, I showed you guys the Port Kai tumor. I showed you guys now, I'm showing you guys the disease. The Center for Disease Prevention and Control was built under the coalition. And when the coalition was building this, when this was being constructed, guess what? Jack Deer when the PPP vagabonds at Freedom House, they were cussing, they were going on. Jack Deer lift his skirt and whine and whine and whine and, and, and thing up and all sort of things. She got, he got vex and vex and vex and they cost this hospital. They cost it until cost not there. But during the pandemic, while they were cussing, this hospital saved many of their lives. Their relatives, their friends and their concubines lives were saved right there at that hospital. Thanks to the coalition government. Can we give the coalition government a, a thank you, right? 
thanks to the coalition government. But wasn't it the same Jack Deal who said nothing? They were built, nothing was done, nothing was built. And you know how we're catching this guy? He's being caught with his with, with his thing. Not about, but he's getting caught every single time he opens his mouth. He gets caught because he is known as a pathological liar. Now, if you think that I'm spreading propaganda on this Paco, listen what he had to say. Listen. No, no major development of any new infrastructure in the five years. We just showed you guys. So who is lying? Look, how can you guys believe somebody like this? He lies right there. And you know, the funny thing is, nobody there as a reporter, nobody there as a journalist, no one was able to say, but Mr. Jack Day, if you want to call him that, Mr. What about the Port Kaituma Hospital? What about the Center for Disease Control that uh, they call it COVID Hospital? but it was more than that what about that hospital talk to us nobody there to remind him what about the the repairs of and the good job done with new amsterdam skeleton and port Marant hospital under the coalition nobody's there to question this guy nobody's there to confront this guy and say that you're a blasted liar no one is there look him out look him out right Oh, man. But we're not done yet, guys. At 10 minutes after 10 o'clock, my name is Mark Bencha, and welcome. But look, under the PVP regime, they're not going to they're not going to tell you guys this. Take a look. This was 2014 article for three days. No bed, no available bed at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation for pregnant women. This this was not in 2018 and 17 and 16, you know. This was in 2014 under the PPP, under the corrupt PPP government. But they're not going to tell you guys that. They're going, Jack Dew is going to lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. But take this, take this. In 2011, this is the Starbuck News again. Beds at the Georgetown Public Hospital. As a result of the limited space available. Look, no, limited space to blame for bed sharing. So every single thing, it's an excuse. Okay, so the patients had to share the bed because they didn't have space. And all manner of things. This wasn't under the coalition, my friend. This was under the PVP in 2011 under the PPP regime. But let's take a look at maternal deaths in the country from 2000. 39 it was the highest, highest per year. 39 and then it goes down because they try to hide numbers and so forth. It went down and down. But look, compliments to the coalition government. Maternal deaths reduced significantly. But the PVP regime, based on this chart, they didn't care. They didn't give a rat's you know what about maternal deaths. And no one, as far as I'm aware, ever got any justice. No one ever got justice, all under the PVP regime. So when Jack Day talks about the health sector, said, no, 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 you are lying. That the best days that the health sector ever had, they were under the coalition government. Well, let's move on. Let's move on and, and show Jack there some more of the evidence. Look, this was in 2011. Limited space to blame for hospital sharing. Good. All right. In 2017, government moves to reduce burden on Georgetown Hospital. That was the coalition government in 2017 had a plan, had a proper plan to reduce the burden reduce the burden on Georgetown Public Hospital. That was done under the coalition. But yet Jack Dev is saying nothing was done. Of course he is right. Nothing was done, but not under the coalition. Nothing was done for the 23 years under the PVPC's government. And he is correct. Nothing is being done now from August 2nd, 2020 to now under the PVP regime. The evidence, the facts are, look, 
a natural way to stay ready, baby. Because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. We call those house slaves and slave catchers. And Kwame McCoy is the epitome of a slave catcher and a house slave. Yes, we must call them out for who they are. It is said it costs one and a half million dollars for a license and one and a half million dollars per weapon. I, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs>